Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a short video looking at some of the key metrics and statistics for Netflix, and also looking at the pressure the business is under, particularly as we head into the autumn of 2019. Netflix is a great example of a digital platform business that is now facing growing intensive competition from some really scale businesses with strong brands. So how might the future for Netflix shape up? As for show of hands in the classroom, and it's a fairly safe bet that a sizable proportion of students will have access to a Netflix account. Indeed, an estimated 37% of the world's internet users use Netflix, although that's not the same as the number who have a paying subscription. Netflix was launched in the United States in 2017, a pivotal year for many. It was the same year that the iPhone first made an appearance. And of course, the success of the business has, hand, has gone hand in glove with mobile telephony. There are some staggering statistics in this graphic. Every minute on the internet, over 2 million snaps are taken and nearly 700,000 hours of Netflix video are watched. So in the UK uh, in 2018, uh, there's been a significant change in viewing habits. Something like 40% of people now watch less TV compared to 2017. And uh, similar proportions say they're now watching more videos, films, TV content via streams and downloads, in particular the ubiquitous box set. So Netflix has been able to, to ride that significant shift in viewing habits and preferences. And it's undoubtedly a very fast growing business, as this chart shows. In the second quarter of 2019, Netflix had over 11.6 million subscribers in the UK. Perhaps you were one of them. This chart shows that towards the end of 2018, 41% of the UK population were subscribed to Netflix, whereas in the same quarter of the previous year, that penetration rate was just 32%. So rapid growth in the UK for sure. And Netflix has a very strong brand recognition and regular weekly usage, particularly amongst the younger demographic. Again, as this chart shows, a significant rise in uh, the share of population watching Netflix by, by age there. So Netflix's business, which has you know, accumulated millions of subscribers, uh, as, you, as this chart shows, so they made it to over 150 million subscribers in the early part of 2019. But um, it's going to need a lot more subscribers. How many more? Well, some industry analysts think that Netflix actually is probably going to need close to a billion subscribers to break through into significant long-term positive cash flow and a billion subscribers given the world population of let's say seven and a half billion that might be beyond even the fastest growing digital platform uh, and many of those new subscribers will have to come from emerging market countries netflix is now facing significant competitive pressure uh, in a sense that the main um, pressure up to the autumn of 2018 essentially was from really Amazon Prime Video. Um, but now um, the market is becoming more congested. Apple, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Walt Disney, uh, HBO, now owned by AT&T. The market is now becoming more contestable both for movies and also for TV shows. Some leading TV executives are saying that what's going to happen is that the content library of Netflix is likely to get smaller because TV and filmmakers, including Disney, for example, they're going to pull their own content away from um, uh, from Netflix to place them on their own platforms. The business has seen significant revenue growth. The total revenue of Netflix was nearly $16 billion in 2018. That was, you know, it was less than $1.5 billion a decade ago. And that's a huge revenue from a business that employs only about 7,000 people. It's a highly capital-intensive platform business. And the business is making an operating profit. 2018, as this chart shows, was a particularly good year. The net income in excess of $1.2 billion. So how come then that the share price for Netflix is falling and the business is draining billions of dollars of cash? Well, uh, this chart shows the cash flow, the free cash flow for Netflix from 2014 to the first quarter of 2019. Now, free cash flow, that means it's the amount of money uh, a business has at its disposal, left to play with, if you like, after it pays for all of its operating and capital expenses. 
The evidence seems to be that the amount of cash that Netflix is draining is substantial. It's probably going to be more than $3 billion um, this year alone. So why is it draining cash? Well, because of the increased commitment Netflix is having to make in a growing contestable market to spend money on new TV uh, and film content. Indeed, Netflix recently has been spending up to 70% of its revenues on content. Um, something like $10, $15 billion a year at tops. Even in the UK, they've just announced they're going to spend $500 million on more than 50 TV shows and films in the UK just this year. So Netflix is profitable, but draining cash. And uh, along with the loss-making Uber, shareholders in Netflix are probably going to need some pretty deep pockets in the months and years to come. The business is borrowing money to pay for this content. It's got more than $12 billion dollars long-term debt so the problem is what happens if subscriber numbers start to to level off perhaps even fall and november 2019 could be a really key month to watch for netflix apple tv and disney plus are launching in november and as you can see from this graphic here they have lower basic monthly fees one of the key questions in the next year if you're following netflix as a business is, is not just the impact of increased competition, that's something to watch really carefully, but also whether the, uh, the recessionary fears in the United States, in Germany, in the UK, they could possibly cause a downturn in subscriptions. The key thing here is whether a monthly Netflix subscription is seen by people as a necessity, the last thing they give up, or perhaps a discretionary spend when household budgets are being, are being tightened. So we look to see how price sensitive consumers are in the, in the United States and in the UK and also what the income elasticity of demand is for a Netflix subscription. So one of the takeaways, I guess, um, from this short video is that the online streaming sector still has plenty of growth because there's been a huge change in our viewing preferences and behavior. But the marketplace is becoming increasingly clouded. Economists call that increasingly contestable. Indeed, the latest data shows that Netflix is suffering from a slowdown in subscriber growth, including a fall in subscribers in the United States. And certainly subscriber numbers are well below forecast. Apple, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Disney, HBO, BritBox in the UK, they're all trying to claim a part of the market. And the Netflix share price is taking a tumble. Indeed, in the last, well, since July, Netflix share price has lost over one third of its value. So Netflix is a growing business, very successful business in many ways, a strong brand, but a business under pressure.